Hello, and thank you for clicking on my Facebook page and viewing my video. Dynamic Learning is proud to present the professional development series for teachers entitled RTI, A Teacher-Friendly Approach, by yours truly, Ryan Westrock. Hi, my name is Ryan, and I have 19 plus years experience in the public school system. Mostly as a teacher, but also as a dean of instruction, department head, coach, and paraprofessional. I spent 15 years in the science classroom teaching 6th, 7th, and 8th grade science with most of my experience in the 8th grade. And I have seen our state's assessment go from the toss to the tax to the star. And with each new measurement, the expectation and rigor expected of our students has increased. That is why I found it important to create a comprehensive tiered review to increase student confidence and success and therefore achievement on the STAR test. I am proud to say I have a Master's of Education in Curriculum and Instruction from the University of Texas at Tyler, one of the only programs in the nation to offer a certification in instructional coaching. Let's take a closer look at the seminar I developed for you your teachers, your students, and your campus. Before I continue, it's important to note that although I created this tiered system for eighth grade science, it can be adapted to any content area that is tested at any grade level, and I'd be happy to work with you and your teachers to do so. But for our purposes today, I'm going to be presenting the eighth grade science star tier for you. And we've all seen this diagram before. As we move up the pyramid, the number of students involved in each tier is going to decrease, while the intensity of the intervention we offer is going to increase. So students in the blue level, tier one, will receive an in-class review that I've created during their science class period by their science teacher. Moving up the pyramid, in tier two, this will take place outside of the class period, possibly outside of the school day, depending on your campus's capabilities. And it's important to note that students in Tier 2 will also receive the Tier 1 intervention. In red, Tier 3 is also an intervention separate from Tier 2, but still outside of the class period, possibly outside of the school day. And students in Tier 3 will also receive Tiers 1 and 2. I'm excited to share with you my original, unique formula for tiering students and the successes that accompany it. As a 15-year classroom veteran, the observations I noticed when incorporating this tiered review was an increased engagement by students in the review process. Students who were lackluster most of the year did not perform well on tests, did not work well in class or on homework assignments, were actually motivated and engaged and therefore more confident when approaching the star. Most of the tiers involved some sort of team competition, so the accountability of all students was enhanced by my tiered process and therefore students' knowledge, motivation, and confidence also increased with my program. Observations are great, but what about the numbers? Well, I think the most significant thing that we saw by enacting all three tiers that in one year our scores rose 10%. We went from 74% passing to 84% passing. Other notable accomplishments are Tier 1 was used for the entire lifespan of the STAR since 2012. In fact, we developed it back during the tax. But we're going to compare apples to apples. And during the five years of STAR testing, 85 to 91 percent of our Tier 1 students passed using our program. When we developed and incorporated Tiers 2 and 3, 100 percent of our Tier 2 students passed 
and 81% of our most at-need Tier 3 students pass the STAR test. Diving a little further into the numbers, you will notice on the left, students who did not attend intervention but were invited to do so. The green bar, 67% of our students that did not attend intervention passed. 20% of those students in Tier 3 that were invited to but did not attend passed, and 0% of special education students who did not attend passed the STAR test. Looking at the middle three bars, those students who partially attended interventions, we see a significant increase in all three categories. 79% of all of our students that partially attended the intervention they were invited to passed. 72% 72, 72 of the Tier 3 students and 91% of the special education students passed the STAR test. Moving over to the right three bars, those students who fully attended all interventions that they were involved in, 86% of all students passed the STAR, 81% of our Tier 3 students passed, and 90% of our special education students passed showing that our program works not just for our struggling students, but our special education students and all students in general. If you and I decide to work together and I work with your teachers, the first thing I'm going to teach them how to do is how to tier their students, again, using my unique formula that I've created. They will be provided the files to calculate the tier ratings and rank their students. Tier 1, as previously mentioned, will take place in class and all students will receive this review. It can be tailored as a 10-day or 15-day review based on your campus's needs. It is inspired by the hit television show Survivor. Just like survivors, students will be competing against one another in tribes to earn a prize. And although that prize will not be $1 million, it will be something as simple as candy or recognition or a little more elaborate as a field trip or a pizza party. I personally did a pizza party the day after the star test for my survivor champions. And unlike the game, we're not voting any students off of the island or out of the classroom but rather the students will vote against other teams for them to lose points in the game. Makes it quite exciting. Now Survivor operates as a three-day cycle. There are four objectives tested on the STAR test. Each of those objectives we will spend three days getting ready for. So four times three is 12 days. I give you one day in the beginning to go over rules and set up the structure of the game, one day at the end to wrap it up, and then a buffer day, just in case we didn't get quite as far as we needed to. But the three-day cycle for all objectives will begin with a review. And in this case, we're looking at the Earth and Space Review for Moon Phases. It will have word banks and questions that the students will work together in their tribes and use notes and or a book to figure out the answer. All of my reviews will come with a key for the teachers to have as a reference. It's also important to note that the reviews will include 6th and 7th grade supporting standards, again, for all four objectives with keys, including our always favorite gridables, which students struggle with. Day two of the three-day cycle involves a game. There are four different games, one for each objective that's going to keep students entertained and not doing the same old thing each time. In this case, the game you're seeing is called Pirate Wars. Pirate Wars comes with a game board, questions, all of the rules, and how to keep score. Let's take a closer look at the game. Pirate Wars is one of the four games based on the star objectives. In this case, it's the Earth and Space objective. 
Every page is linked and begins with the rules, not only for students, but teachers to clearly understand. Next, the students and teachers will see an example of how score will be kept and how that score will be awarded to their tribe during the game. When the game begins, this is what the game board looks like. You will notice that each group has a certain number of ships in their fleet. The anchors represent the questions on the side. So the teacher would select a group to pick an anchor. Let's say that the group pick anchor number 22. We'll click on anchor 22. And that will jump us to one of the questions that is in the review. In this case, it's from page four. So students would turn to page four, which they completed the day before, and answer the questions that they see on the screen. And the teacher can simply tap, and the answers will be revealed. If the tribe got it correct, they will go back to the game board, and have one of two options. They can either A, add a ship to their fleet, earning their team more points, or B, take a ship away from a team that they're in opposition to. So let's say that I was on the green team, group two, and we got it correct, and we have a rivalry with the purple team, group four. We're gonna take one of their ships away. The teacher will simply click the ship, and the ship conversely if it's group four the purple's team turn next and they get their question right they can now add a ship back to their fleet giving them a complete fleet and this game goes on and continues until all questions have been answered and the way the teacher and students know a question has already been selected is we put this little wheel over the questions that are done, and we, that signals that we can no longer choose that one. The third day of the three-day objective cycle involves an immunity challenge. There are five total immunity challenges throughout the course of survival. Students will enter on the third day of the cycle and find a survivor mail message in a designated location. This message is going to have the directions for the immunity challenge that the team or tribe will compete in. In this case, this one is called Formula Frenzy, which uses the formula chart that the students have on the STAR test. The message says, add and subtract, multiply and divide. The first with the answer keeps points on their side and then gives the student the directions. Students will then report to a designated area in the classroom and see the formula frenzy worksheet. They will answer the question, write the answer to the right, and go down the line following each number. Number 12 instructs them to add all of their answers together to get a magic number. So for example, in number one, the speed of a car traveling 60 kilometers in 0.5 hours gives the students the answer of 120 kilometers per hour. That number, 120, will be added to the answer in numbers 2 through 11. And that total will give the team a magic number. The first team to write that magic number down and give it to the host or the teacher wins immunity. Again, the teacher will have a key for everything in my tiered interventions. Immediately after the immunity challenge, the class participates in what's called tribal council. And these are our voting slips, so they would be cut into slips of paper, and each group gets one slip. And their job now is to write down the name of a team, other than theirs, that they would like to vote 20 points off from during the game. The kicker is they cannot vote for the team that won the immunity challenge, therefore the purpose of the immunity challenge. And that completes the tier one review that would take place, again, for either 10 or 15 days, 
depending on what your year at a glance has scheduled for Star with you. And that's a very, very easy, flexible um, adjustment that we can make. Moving on to Tier 2. Tier 2 is a station team-focused supplemental review outside of the classroom. And I can talk to you how you can incorporate that during the school day or after the school day if I get the chance to work with you and your teachers. But it covers the 15 readiness standards. Now let me explain why we only talk about the readiness standards in our Tier 2 and Tier 3 reviews rather than readiness and support. 65% of the STAR test is going to come from the readiness standards. So if we can narrow our focus, it's a whole lot less overwhelming for students who have been struggling with the content throughout the year. And hopefully, with these in-depth look at the readiness standards and the Tier 1 in-class intervention that also covers the supporting standards, students will pick up enough information from these tiers to pass the test. And currently, students have to get 62% of the questions correct on the science test to pass. So that's why we're focused on the readiness standards. But let's take a closer look at what one of the stations would look like in this tier. I've chosen station number two, which is entitled Chemical Reaction Per Plug. The first thing the teacher will read is the materials they need to be successful. Some of the materials I will be providing, other materials are going to either have to go out and purchase or create and make on their own. So in station two, they're going to need an item to demonstrate a chemical reaction. Whether that's baking soda and vinegar they went and bought at the grocery store or something a little more jaw-dropping like a pre-made chemical reaction from a science company such as Flynn. I give some recommendations of ones that were um, pretty exciting for students. The next thing they're going to need is either a homemade or a store-bought Kerplunk gang. I give pictures of both. We had some very active dads who uh, enjoy woodworking and whatnot, and they really got into volunteering and creating the games for us. Um, so it was to no expense for the school. Thirdly, they're going to need a student response system. This can be something techy, uh, like clickers or good old-fashioned dry erase boards and uh, markers. And finally, questions and keys that will be provided by me. After getting all the materials together, the teacher is going to see the procedures that they're going to need to successfully implement the station um, during Tier 2. So, as any good teacher knows, we have to go over rules and procedures, so we'll start with that. Uh, then they will be conducting a chemical reaction that the students will view, and the students will be instructed that the questions to follow will come from this reaction. Next, the students will return to a designated area where their whiteboards and markers or their clickers are, some way that they can respond, and the teachers will ask questions. For every three members of the team that get an answer correct, the team will have the opportunity to pull one stick in the Kerplunk game. So it's very important to note here that students would be answering individually. That way, each one of them is accountable for the question and the information covered. And then together, the more students who answer correctly, the more sticks they pull from the Kerplunk game. The object of the game is to be the most team, the team with the most marbles that have fallen. A little different than the original Kerplunk game. We've taken a little twist here, but it's a fun way to do this. At the end of all the rotations, the team that has the most marbles that have fallen will get the most points. The second most will get the second most amount of points, and so on. Next, the teacher will see the point system. So after all six teams have rotated through their station, they will award points based on the number of marbles fallen. And then the teacher will also be given the questions with the answers highlighted in red. Uh, these questions can be read out loud. The red can be deleted from the page. And the questions can be projected to the class, however the teacher chooses to do this. And finally, in Tier 2, the teacher is going to get the logistics on how to run the entire tier cohesively and functionally. 
The final tier, Tier 3, also covers the 15 readiness standards in a format supplemental to classroom instruction. Since there are fewer students in this tier, our student to teacher ratio is going to be much smaller. It's a 1 to 3 to 5 ratio. So the teacher working with this small group will be focused on test taking strategies and activating prior knowledge. The first thing the teacher would have the students complete is our vocabulary maps, then move on to the concept maps, and then finally our tapering test taking strategies. As with everything, I provide clear, detailed instructions on how to successfully implement the tier. First off, the students would each receive a vocabulary map, preferably laminated. And on the left-hand column, there will be vocabulary words printed in. I've chosen Readiness Standard 8.5a, Atomic Structure. You'll notice the right column is empty. This is where the student will be placing definitions that were laminated and placed in a Ziploc bag, as you can see here. The teacher would need to cut them out and laminate them, and the students would manipulate them and match them up. Of course, everything I do comes with a key, so even a paraprofessional or a parent volunteer or a special education lab instructor could do this intervention. Once the students have successfully matched the vocabulary with their definition, therefore activating their prior knowledge, the students would take it to the next level, as STAR does, and use those vocabulary words to see how they are interrelated in a concept map. Again, this would be laminated, and each student would receive one and work individually to match the terms or concepts onto the concept map. And again, a key will always be provided. Once the students have successfully done this, we'll move on to our last layer of Tier 3, which will be our tapering test-taking strategies. Also provided with a key. So let's take a closer look at the program that I use to successfully implement Tier 3. The final layer of Tier 3 involves test taking strategies, getting our students comfortable and confident on how to dissect these questions and eliminate wrong answer choices. The first thing you'll notice at the top left hand corner of the screen is this is from the 2015 STAR test. With the help of Lead Forward, I've taken the more difficult questions students have seen in the past on STAR and applied my Tier 3 strategies to help students get comfortable and gain confidence with the material. The next thing you're going to notice is that this is with the mat and steps. So what that means is students will be able to use the vocabulary and concept maps they created as a confidence booster for this question. And then the steps, which are numbered on the right side, one, two, and three, the teacher will go through those steps with the student. So the first thing the teacher would do is direct students to turn to question 45 in their packet. So each student would have this question in front of them and be able to mark on it as they would a STAR test. The teacher then would read the question out loud and get the students to focus in on what exactly is the question asking us. Is there any information that is superfluous? Can we cross it out? Do we need to circle anything that stands out? So they will take step number one, and they're going to pull it to where it says to stop for number one, like so. And this has now focused the students in on what the question is asking. An atom consists mostly of empty space with, and then they're given the four choices. Step two, the teacher will instruct the students to draw an atom of all three particles. Now, although they don't have a picture in their reference materials, they do have the names of the particles 
and hopefully with a little bit of uh, prior knowledge activation they could do this. Of course the teacher might have to walk around and assist students who are still struggling. But the ultimate goal is to get an atom with all three parts correctly linked. And then the final step will always be to eliminate all answer choices uh, based on the draw. When a student is finished, their paper should look something like this. With the content of the question circled, their atom drawn, and then their incorrect choices eliminated, and their correct choice circled. The teacher would then move on to the next question, which in this case is question number 15 from the 2013 test. Now notice at the top it's just the steps. So the teacher will have collected the reference materials that the students worked with. And now it's just going to guide them with the steps. So we're weaning them off slowly but surely. So step number one, again, circles the important part of the question, describe an electron. As we scroll down, step number two is going to tell us to fill in the table. On the real star test, that table is not going to exist, but hopefully with some training we can get the kids to um, be able to recreate this. And step number three, they will use the information they wrote in the table to cross out incorrect answers. And the final result would look something like this on the student's paper. Table is filled in. Incorrect answer choices are eliminated and the correct answer is identified. The final step would be another question. And at the top here, it says no help. So the students would not have the, the guidance of the teacher or the reference materials to help them. But hopefully with enough training, students would be able to recreate the question. I also provide a teacher guide just in case students are struggling or the teacher doesn't understand how to address the question. And of course, the final result being what the student's paper would look like at the end. And that concludes my presentation for RTI, a teacher-friendly approach. I do have several options if you're interested in me working with you and campus and your teachers. I offer a one-day tier one only training on implementing Survivor into the classroom. Or I offer a one-day training on tiers two and three intervention processes and how to tier your students into the different categories or most beneficial, a two-day training on all three tiers plus the how-to tier information. If you prefer just the files to all the reviews, games, and interventions, and no face-to-face -face training for your campus or your teachers, that is also an option for you. Now you might be wondering, well, Ryan, why, why pay you if my teachers can create what you've created? Well, first and foremost, I'm going to provide two follow-up consultations for each one of the teachers involved in the training. One right before launching the review and one midway through to kind of check and see how things are going. And as you can see in orange, a minimum of 30 hours of exposure, including follow-up opportunities, is required for a professional development technique to be effective. Also, I'm a veteran teacher. I know what is expected of students on the STAR test. I have spent countless hours dissecting the standards as well as the questions asked on STAR and cross reference that with the review I created to make sure it's very comprehensive. We've had proven results with this system and I have spent hundreds of man hours creating all of the reviews, games, logistics, stations, test taking strategies, and so on and so forth. So this would save your teachers hours upon hours of time. I hope to be hearing from you soon. RTI, a teacher-friendly approach, is simple, it's effective, and it's fun. Please feel free to contact me at any point via email or telephone. I will respond to text messages as well, and I look forward to hearing from you. Take care and good luck on a successful testing season.